Hi, it's Tommy from the Tommy Sandu podcast, but you know that because you obviously just hit play on the Tommy Sandu podcast, well, you should know that. Uh, welcome, one and all. This conversation that we're gonna have today is with a guy called Peter Vance. Now, Peter is a historian, he collects artwork and artifacts, and he does talks and seminars, and he talks about the history of Sikhs, and more particularly, he's focused on Maharaja Dalip Singh. He was the son of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, uh, who was brought over to the England, who has uh, connections to Norfolk and deep connection to into English life. And, um, and I suppose I wanted to get him on because the subject is huge. We know that, uh, you know, recently we were talking to Satnam Sanghera about empire, and we know it's a huge topic. But I was more, I guess I'm more fixated on the fact that sometimes I feel like by focusing on history, we get left in the past a little bit. It can cause problems. It causes tensions between cultures and communities even now when people are fixated on the past. So I'm, I just wanted to kind of get my head around, I suppose, in my own little journey sense of, of how much should we keep an eye on the past and what benefit does that really have? Um, this is a kind of a quite an open chat again uh, with someone who's got a real passion for this subject. Um, but I want to just explore why it's important to keep an eye on the past. This is the Tommy Sandy podcast with Peter Bantz. Peter Bantz, welcome. I should say my dad would be disappointed if I say Bantz. He, he go <laughs> Bunts. You know, you know, it's pronounced Bunts. You know, it's not Bantz. So, what do you prefer? Because one side of your name, like me, is very English, and the other yeah. side, is full on Desi. Well, I've always been told it's uh, it's Bantz, as in like when you're saying Punjabi, but not Bantz Nagar. So that's all, that's what or, it's. Or, or, or as we say in East London, if you know, it's all about the, the banter, and then it's all yeah. about the bants, <laughs> like that as well. So, but but we're going to have some uh -huh. bants, Peter. But before we get yeah. into the bants of what you're all about, um, no. happy Diwali. Happy Diwali to you as well. Yeah, man. Uh, what what goes on in uh, the bants or bants household for this it's special a, time of year? It's a very homely affair, so we just spend it with the family. And this this uh, Diwali, it's my it falls on my dad's birthday as well, so it's it's hey. going to be. Uh, and it's his seventieth, so um, it'd be a um, it'd be a nice uh, home um, home affair. So it'd be nice. Uh, That's a big deal. A deal here. What, what what does he want to do? Well, my dad's not. He's sort of he doesn't like a fuss made. So we're just going to take him out for for lunch. We're not going to do dinner. We do a lunch, and then in the evening we'll just sit as a family and and, and have sort of close relatives around. Now, because I love food, let me do before because we've got so much to talk about with you. But <laughs> give me your ideal. You're almost like your sorry to be so negative all of a sudden but your electric yeah. chair meal you know like what would it be what is your desi kana you know they go right last you know this is the meal this is the one to sign it off with what is it going to be well i do like a mixed grill it's got to be a starter i love my mixed grills <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> you, you straight away Pete, Pete, you're in prison you're like yeah i need courses uh, i'm going to yeah. start with some nibbles uh start with a little mixed grill starter <laughs> and then as your main sub g what you're going to go with um, it's got to be chicken based I, I like my chicken so it's got to be something with ch chicken so I don't know whatever it is as long as it's a, it's a chicken curry yeah <laughs> Pature, punia, oh. chol. what's the carb um, it's got to be roti without butter oh so you don't, yeah. why, 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 yeah. why were you so quick to add the, the, the uh, it's just something the I like I just don't like anything which is too too heavy and, and too oily so I just well, yeah sukhi roti is more, more meat yeah. you don't like heavy that, yeah. Everything we eat is built on the heavy. Oh, no, everything, no. We, you know, <laughs> it's you got to think. I've got a start. I've got a starter. I've got mains. I've got dessert as well. So, <laughs> you're playing the long game. Yeah, you're playing. That. Yeah, it's, it's strategic. You're like, hey, look, it's a marathon. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Now, good. No, listen. Well, thank you, and um, thank you for coming onto the podcast. It's That's um, a pleasure. It's this is. I'm. I, look, I'm. I'm kind of. I'm always get a bit nervous. I suppose talking about this subject of empire and. Uh, seek history and the roles that each part played partly because um, I'm not too educated on it I've never really looked into it I've lived quite a kind of western life um, yeah. I've loved the fact that I've got this Punjabi heritage but I right. think it influenced me in my music and in my character and in my the way I come across on stage oh he's the big Punjabi bloke it's that kind of thing rather than the history side and then the people around me that talk about the history of Punjab and Sikhs and soldiers and empire always seem a bit hardcore. You know, like they're going to throw it in my face a bit. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to say something silly here because it means so much to some people that I'm just in danger of upsetting someone. So 
I've shied away from it. But then a few weeks ago, we got Satnam Sangera on and he kind of said the same thing. He said, I didn't know about these things. And I'm like, you're Satnam Sangera. Like, you know, you're educated at these top universities. You've done all this reading. And if he can not know that I feel like it's all right for me to not know. And now I feel all right talking about it. And more so Satnam said something. He said, what happened then absolutely affects the way we are living now. And he said, we are here because they were there. And that's really stuck with me. And I've been through my own stuff against the system, uh, you know, the Western world and how they view uh, our culture. So I can relate. I'm relating a lot of it to my own personal life. So now I just want to know more, which is why I wanted to get you on, Pete. Uh, did that make sense? Yeah, like, I mean, do, yeah, do, yeah sure. Do, what, what kind of people do you come across wanting to know about the history of particularly Maharaja Dalip Singh, but also, you know, empire and everything that happened? Who, who, who's intrigued by it? It's from all spectrums and all ages uh, and from all over the world. So it's just not it's not a, a certain group. I mean, you can say, yes, the youngsters want to know more about their roots and where their forefathers came from. But equally, um, when I go when I go to functions, I get people who are old, much older than me wanting to know because they've never actually delved into their history. And, and many of them never had time to delve into history. They've been so busy with their, you know, since coming to this country and work, work, work. They've not, not had an opportunity to, to look into their own uh, history and heritage. And I'm intrigued by you. Like I said, when I talk about those people that are, you know, very close to me, friends, family, you know, who are very much into it and they know names of Maharajas, dates, they know battles, they know outcomes, they know the wives and the kids. It's, you know, I struggle when I'm having to relay what happened in the Netflix series because I'm like, oh, oh yeah, who, who, who was that there? And who's, yeah. who's, and you seem, you've stored all that, you've got all of that now and you know the stories that have, you know, that have happened. But what what first triggered you into it? Because you are a, you're a historian now. I suppose. Is that your title? Or is that no, what yeah, you can, you can call me that. But you're, you're never going to know everything. And you're, you, you tend to focus on what interests you the most. So there, there's so many different aspects of history. We've got the, we've got the, the Sikh history part. We've got the religious history, the Guru's history. We've got 19th century history. We've got the colonial history, um, 20th century, early 20th century history as in the struggle for freedom, uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's history. So people pick and choose the sections that they like or they enjoy. And some of them are complete encyclopedias on their subjects. So they know they can focus on that because you're never going to know everything and you're never no. going to remember all the dates for every single thing that happened in all the history. Um, no. And it just so happened that the Leib Singh's history was something which um, I ended up sort of picking in and it stuck with me. Why? Why particularly Maharaja Dalip Singh? Purely accidental. We we was on a um, this is during my days at university, and we was on a, a student union trip to Norfolk, and a couple of the chaps who were quite history fanatics in in, in the group uh, when we went to Norfolk said, look, let's stop on the way on the A11 because the old A11 went right past Elberton, right past the church where the Leap Singh's buried, and they said, let's uh, look at the, the Leap Singh um, graves, and um, I thought, yes, yeah, it's, it's, I never I'd never been there at the time, and. Uh, I saw the grave, I realised that he, he had a wife and I had a child as well. There were three graves in Elverden. And uh, a local lady came up to us, um, a local resident, and said, uh, did you know there's a, a museum in the, in the local town of Fetford, which was founded by the, uh, the Maharaja's son? So we thought, let, no, we're here now. Let's, let's go and check this museum out. And 20 minutes later, all I can say is I was standing inside a shrine to the Dilip Singhs. The museum was uh, founded, donated by the Maharaja's son to the town. And he'd given many of the family keepsakes um, to, to, the, to the museum. And then I found out the Maharaja had six children, which I, I was never aware of. And it just intrigued me. And I, at that point of my life, I had never been to India, never been to Punjab. And this was a bit of Punjab history, you can say, that I could research in England without having to travel abroad. And I asked the local curator, was there any, any books on, on the Leap Singh children? And he said, no, there's, there's no books on, on, on the Maharaja's uh, family. And I placed a local ad in the paper, a letter to the editor in, in Norfolk. And over the coming six months, I had around 300 replies from people, people who knew the family, um, had their forefathers had worked for the family, friends, associates, and many of them invited me to come and see them and said, oh, we've got such and such item or we've got this, which was given to my father by the Leap Singh or his daughters. And so that's where my, my research, it was just a hobby. And that's where my research uh, really began into, into the family. Isn't that funny? And now, you know, here we are talking because it's, 
it's dictated your life. I, I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm gonna, I wanna question you a little bit because I, I wanna, I'm trying to get it clear in my own head. So, you know, please just bear with me when I kind of say things like, history should be left in the past. And the more, Peter, we focus on the past, we're not moving forward as a race, as a, as a culture, uh, because we're going we, to, as my, you know, my mum might say in, re, in regard to other things is, I'm kind of getting my Punjabi out now, you know what I mean? Like, don't get stuck in those Prani Gal. Why is it important that we, you, want to share that we do keep an eye on what happened in the past? Well, it's, it's history is what makes us. So, you know, if we don't know our roots, we can't go forward. If we, we, we've got to know what was behind us to, to move forward. And I always say to people when people don't agree with what's happened, and I said, look, we can't change history. You know, it's, it's happened. Uh, like it or dislike it, it's happened. Um, but the way forward is that we can learn from history and not make the same mistakes that we did in the past or what our forefathers did. So I think history is very important. I mean, we can we can play the blame game, with, especially with colonial history, with um, history of Maharaja Ranjit Singh and, and Punjab. You know, why did we lose the kingdom? Was it because the British? Was it our own fault? You know, we can blame everyone and anyone. Um, and the ultimate thing is that we must learn from, from, from the mistakes that were made then. And, and that will help us to, to move forward and make sure those sort of mistakes. And, and oh, some would say, okay, let's, yeah. let's then, let's, let's just have a little thing about what your actual, your kind of, your main subject, yeah. which is Maharaja Dilip Singh, the son of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. So, yeah. Ranjit Singh, if I can just, sorry, I'm going to try and summarise it in my uh, yeah. non-educated uh, <laughs> way like you. He was the man, right? So he yeah. ran it for 40 odd, about 40 odd years, was it? We know when, with the Brits, you know, right, while yeah. they were there. Yeah. Is that right? From 1805 to about 1840? Well, go on. You seven, 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 well, Ranjit Singh from 1799 to 1899, so around right. 50 years. Yeah, and then he passes away. And kind of like, that's where it all went. For, for, from when I, for what I just see from um, the outside, that's where it all kind of started to go wrong a little bit because nobody messed with Maharaja Ranjit Singh, but yeah. they all, they could mess with a five-year-old who was put in place of him. Well, you've got to think, Dalip Singh didn't, wasn't put on the throne after Ranjit Singh, so we had um, three successes before uh, Dalip Singh. So the problem Ranjit Singh had, he had seven sons from, uh, well, from various different wives. And when you have that issue, every, every mother wants their son uh, to be the ruler. And the, I think one of the, the key, you could say it's a mistake. I mean, we're, we're no one to judge, but Ranjit Singh chose his eldest son to be a successor, Kirk Singh, which to my, to my research, I, I don't think he was up to the task. You know, he should have chosen somebody. I mean, he didn't, he didn't even have to choose his own son to take over the kingdom. He should have chosen somebody who was more able, you know, yeah. but that's what it was about. He, he, built, he built this kingdom, you know, single-handedly, and it should have been passed out to somebody who he thought, you know what, after me, this this chap, this 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 man or woman can take uh, this kingdom forward. Um, he chose Kirk Singh, and within Kirk, within a year, Kirk Singh um, was overthrown by his own son, Ranjit Singh's grandson, Nunihal Singh. Um, and within six months, Kirk Singh passes away. And on the funeral of his father, on the funeral of Kirk Singh, Nunihal Singh has an accidental death. You know, he and the, the gateway of the the whole fort falls on him. Now, again, was it murder or was it intrigue? was an accident, we'll never know. Um, and then Ranjit Singh's second son, Shira Singh, comes on the throne. So there was, there was a few rulers, successes in between. And um, when, when Shira Singh is actually assassinated by his own cousins, the Sandawalia family, uh, that's when we find um, there are not many people or not, not many families or, or not many, many sons um, who could uh, for, put for, for their claim to the front of the Punjab. And we're left with a five-year-old Dalip Singh. And, that's partly because his maternal uncle, Jawar Singh, held great influence in the, in the royal court. And he pushes his own, his own nephew uh, to the forefront. And his, um, his sister, Marani Jinda, the, the, the mother of Dalip Singh, becomes the, the, the queen mother. And she effectively runs, uh, runs the kingdom. So already, I mean, yeah. this is, I'm sorry, and, and again, yeah. I'm sitting there in 2021, listening yeah. to this. In, and again, I've heard the stories, but I suppose it just maybe you reach an age in your life, you know, I'm mid forties, and you're now you just it means more now. It didn't, you know, you I was, you know, you're distracting your twenties and thirties. You're in the in another zone. I'm just thinking, well, that's all in the past. I'm, you know, I'm I need to make money. I need to do this. I'm, you know, I need to be a TV radio presenter. But now you, 
I just look at those things differently. And weirdly, those words that you're saying cut through and I'm, I get, I get instantly, and I'm sure many other Sikhs might feel the same way, or even just people who feel injustice of history. I don't know how you say those things so calmly. I, I'm straight away, I'm disappointed. I'm annoyed at Maharaj Ranjit Singh for like giving to his uh, member of his family that he must have known his son was, you know, like, how do you, how can you, how do you find, because you clearly have a passion for it. How can yeah. you talk about it without getting pulled into it? I think I've spoken about it so many times. So <laughs> it's just, uh, <laughs> you get used to it going over and over again. Because um, you know, people often say to me, oh, well, you know, we were hard done by and the, and the British, you know, took our kingdom and and, and destroyed the, the Sikh empire or the Punjab empire. Um, but then I said, well, we should look at ourselves as well because there's so many key players, you know. For example, the first decision was Ranjit Singh choosing a, a rightful successor. And then when we did have Norni Hal Singh, you know, who killed Norni Hal Singh, the grandson of Ranjit Singh, who assassinated um, Ranjit Singh's second son, Cher Singh. So, and, and then obviously... When the leap scene comes on the phone, why uh, does why do we have the Sikh wars? What instigated it? You know, was it was it partly to do with Rani Jindal's actions uh, to get revenge uh, for her brother's uh, murder? So so many things could have uh, which what well, did happen, uh, which were the faults of of of, of Sikhs themselves as well. Uh, so we need to look at that as well. So it's not it's not easy to blame just the easy, the easy way it's to blame the British. Say look, you know they did this, but quite easily it could have been the French. It could have been the Dutch. You know, there were so many other um, uh, uh, military powers which would want to get a foot in India or had a foot in India. So if it wasn't the British, it, it could have been the French East, uh, the French East India Company or, or the Dutch as well. Uh, and I, I was um, watching something that you had, you'd taken part in as well, but the, the involvement of the Russians as well with Maharaj Leipzig trying to encourage him to attack back in India. And then the, in, the Americans who was internally uh, involved as well so i mean like it feels like man you can't yeah. trust anyone pete yeah. you well, everyone's everyone can stab you in the back even your own family yeah, yeah. so but those so, but, that, but those were the times that that's it, it was all about empire building at any cost and you know every country was at it it just so happened that the british were damn good at it um and they they, they dotted the i's and, and they, they ticked the c so they they, they did it in a very professional uh, although very unjust and controversial manner um and uh, obviously you know we, yeah, we we can hold them to account but then equally you know there were so many other factors uh, within ourselves we, we, we need to look at as well yeah so so you're on you're on your own path journey story yeah where where do you want to see this go i mean where, where what's the end message what's what are we are we, are we looking at or are you just enjoying the exploration of history well, as I said, it, it started as a hobby uh, when I was at university, and it probably is still a hobby, but it's sort of taken over my life as well. But I, I'm just enjoying discovering parts of history which have not been uh, recorded or, or, or published. And it's nice to, to publish things which have not been, uh, which are not known. Um, the, the difference I can say in my work is that where you know, a, a lot of historians before me and, and some maybe afterwards tended to sort of go to libraries or records office and, 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 and look at official accounts and, and, and government records. Um, I enjoyed the part of actually going to the areas in Norfolk and Suffolk, visiting families who knew the, you know, the descendants who knew the family, getting their accounts of what they thought of them. And I mean, luckily in the 90s, late 90s, I met literally dozens of, of people who, who, who knew uh, the children, all the children. And uh, it was so nice, you know, to literally sit face to face with someone, and and hear, hear them talk about oh, Prince Frederick or Princess Bamba, like they were their friend, and they would just keep, you know, those sort of personal anecdotes you can't get in any book, you can't get in any in any records office, and you know, you're hearing it from the horse's mouth. So you know, it's it's those sort of anecdotes, and those people sadly now have passed away, and luckily I was there to to record that and. And, and slowly I'm publishing them. And with, with Instagram and, and, and other social media outlets, um, I get to share it with such a wider audience now, which I, which I actually wasn't doing before. And it was my, um, my, my, my friends and my family said to me, look, you, you need to put it out on, on social, social media because uh, people will take a real interest in these anecdotes. And it's been, and, uh, during COVID, it's been amazing. Yeah, and, and there's been movies made recently as well. I mean, there's movies on Dilip Singh. Um, do you watch those or do they 
do they wind you up because they're like, no, that's not what happened, or that's not how it was? Do you, well, do you see with, things with like the that? with the Black Prince, which was made by Sardaj, uh, well, Star Sardaj, and mm -hmm. um, I was um, uh, I assisted with the script and and obviously with costumes, etc. So they they all the, the, the whole crew, the crew came around, a lot of the stars came around. Um, the, obviously got a got a good friendship with Sardaj from this, and you know we 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 talked a, a lot about. The character even talked with Shabana Azmi about uh, her playing uh, Maharani Jinda. But effectively, as you know, with films, you can tell them whatever you want to tell, but they're going to do what they want to do. And it just wasn't, you know, I, I don't think, I think the story had enough masala in there without you making a new masala um, mm. to, 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 to sell it. And I think if right. it's just kept to the script, then sadly, I don't think the budget was, was there for the film. Uh, it really needed a, a high budget film um to, to to really justify the leaping story and it is and and you know a kind of i'm purposely by the way i'm not getting too much because we could put for hours about yeah. the actual events from ranjit singh to the leap singh and but there's some for me there's just some fascinating moments in all that journey and and i'm just i'm always curious by the fact that it's taken over your world you know but yet it, here you i mean this is like you say it's taken over your life right yeah. now and your friends and family saying you know this Pete, this is your thing. You've got to get on social media. You've got to talk to the people about it. But I, I, I worry slightly and I wonder more so that are, are your kids or your kids' kids or my kids' kids going to even care or have a connection to it? Will it be no different learning about Maharaja Dilip Singh than it would be about, uh, um, you know, anybody else uh, from any other part of history from all over the world? I think there's a huge interest from the from, from the younger generation in the story, more than that was in our generation, and even more than our, our parents' generation. Um, why obviously, do you various is? factors. Sorry. Why is that? Why Why do you think the youngsters are now getting into it more so? Um, a because obviously, as I said, but when our parents' generation, it was they never had the time to, to delve into history. I mean, it was, as I said, it was all about work. And secondly, now as um, our generation and and, and next generation are born in this country. Uh, the Leipzig and the Leipzig family, something they can relate to. So it's a, it was a Punjabi family which which came here, or was, or was born here, and lived in this country. And I just see the, the Leipzig story as a piece of Punjabi history, which is our own history in England. You know, we don't have to go to Punjab, we don't have to go to India um, to to get that history. Um, and and that's one of the one of the reasons why I, I wasn't really for the the Leipzig um, remains to go back to uh, to, to Punjab. Because I felt, you know, it's 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 part of uh, Punjabi British history, which is which belongs here, and it's uh, it'll be more respected, it's more looked after here than it would do would be um, in in India or, or Pakistan. That's right, because I think you know, differently to the headlines that you hear about the Kohinoor or you know the kind of what I call like you know the, the big the big headlines about empire and and things that were maybe taken, given, mm -hmm. and all that. Actually, what's interesting is. He grew up, Dilip Singh is a Brit. You know, like yeah. he, from, from a young age, he was raised there. What was his daughter's names? Is it Irene and, uh, am I getting mixed well, the, up? The, from Irene, Irene and Pauline were the daughters from the second marriage, but the, um, from the first marriage was Bamba, who was named after Dilip Singh's first wife. Um, yeah. And then we had Catherine was the second, one, second daughter. And uh, Sophia was the, the third daughter. And right. was named I mean, after her. Yeah, sorry. He, he sold out pretty quickly on the names. I got, I got grief for calling my son Milo. You know, like oh, like, and I'm like oh, well. so you know, like he, you know, I'm saying there are. I'm sorry, I'm being, I'm, I'm joking when I say that. But what I mean is, yeah. you know, he here he is with daughters called from one a relationship, Pauline and Irene and Catherine yeah. and a, you know, like so. Yeah. Th this guy, if, if if it was now, this guy is a, uh, you know, he's a he's a British Asian kid. It is. That's why I said it's, it's something that you can relate to. But as I said, there was there were many reasons for the names he chose because some of them, like for example, Frederick, which was his son's name, he chose that because the crown prince of of of, of, uh, of Germany, and Bamba, uh, his eldest daughter, was named after his his wife. Again, Sophia was after his, his mother mother in law. So there were reasons why it wasn't just random names he chose. He chose them for a specific uh, specific reason. Uh, but they still use the leap sing, so they use their father's first and last name as their middle and last. So Catherine oh, okay. will be known as Catherine the leap sing. Okay. And yeah. do you, do you Percy, do you believe in you know stock coming from that stock of Ranjit Singh, the leap sing? You know, like there is therefore something that runs within a body 
that can pass on to another generation. Uh, so therefore, Ranjit Singh was right to keep it in the family. That actually, because the reason, actually, my point for asking that was, I know that his daughters uh, didn't they didn't they help Jews ex escape from Nazi Germany? One of the daughters did. Um, That's right, Ka Catherine the Leap Singh, and on the twenty seventh of October, we we celebrated her hundred fiftieth birth anniversary. And when I started researching Catherine's life, she was the most mysterious and elusive member of the family. She lived most of her life in Europe and I later discovered she was in Germany. And that's because her German governess, uh, who we really to found out was actually her lover, um, that the pair of them decided to, to settle in Kassel in Germany. And just before the Second World War, uh, when, Nazi German, um, when Nazism was on the increase, um, she helped many of the Jewish families um, escape, uh, vouch for them, uh, and then gave them refuge in um, her house in Buckinghamshire. Um, and this is right up to the beginning and starting of the war. And um, when we held actually a commemoration uh, and a, a launch to the, um, the exhibition last, last week. And we actually had some of the, the members of the Jewish families who actually saved um, come down and they gave their account. And it was very emotional just to hear them uh, basically say that if it wasn't for Princess Catherine's uh, actions, we wouldn't exist today. And then you could then argue if it wasn't for the leaps and all those other events that went before it for the leaps to come to this country, whatever, you know, under whatever guise, whatever reason the Brits got him over here. And, and sorry, I've got to say, because actually, you know, in, in a few days, um, England are playing Scotland. The, the Scottish were very good to the leaps The Logan family were very good yeah. to him. And Logan, by the way, is my other son's name. Um, right. you know, so, so there's a, there's, there's, I'm saying there's little, which, which I knew about, I knew the, Log but are the Logans, sorry, are the Logans good guys? Or have I named my son after bad guys? But I, I you know, I know that he, his, that was like his paternal father, the Leap Singhs. Um, well, he was like his guardian. Logan. He was a, he was actually a, a surgeon in the British Indian Army whose, right. um, whose duty was to actually bring the Leap Singh up as, as an Englishman. Um, like, was he the good guy? Was he the bad guy? We will, probably will never know. Um, obviously the Leap Singh looked up to him and, um, it is said that on Logan's, uh, Sir John Logan's funeral in, in Felixstowe, he openly wept and said, today I've lost my father. So that's how high he held um, John Logan during his lifetime. Wow. So, so I mean, so, so you know, you, you study these, these kind of characters and clearly his daughter's going off and doing, uh, the daughter kind of doing, doing that work that she did and, and helping, you know, the Jewish families in, in Nazi Germany. That... That kind of stuck. I suppose what I want to instill in people listening to this podcast is you're from something and it means something. And I, and I think I'm saying that and I see that more as a dad now, you know, even though we might be generations away from the, the seat warriors of, you know, of, of, of over 100 years ago. Um, yeah. But there is something that runs in us. You know, I want people who listen to this to know that they come from a stock and then that and that means something that we might not be closely connected in the way we live our lives now to warriors or kings or royalty or people that want to make a difference. But, you know, the, these guys were brave. Even the daughters were brave to do what they did for them to have for to have a, a female partner to go off and live. Like, that's that's a brave, bold statement. And I guess I guess what I want to take from this, I want my sons and I want other people listening to kind of go, hey, you are of that. You're of the same uh, materials. You're made of the same nuts and bolts as warriors. Yeah. Well, as, uh, definitely. When we, if we talk about Sophia, who was uh, key in the in the suffragette movement, um, quite, uh, quite a well-known suffragette uh, for, for women's rights, um, women to get the to get the vote, um, she chained herself to the gates of Hampton Court Palace, and um, even had her her jewels and her possessions um, pos uh, repossessed because she refused to pay pay taxes. And um, she was, she had that spirit of her father, uh, sorry, her, her grandfather. But then equally, as you said, Catherine as well, uh, for the work she did, I mean, she was li literally putting her own life at danger uh, to help others. Um, it was such perilous times. And, and had she been had caught in, in, in Germany, um, the, the consequences would have been fatal. And then Bamba was the oldest daughter, which we, we don't really talk about. And it's someone we, sh we should focus on more because right up to her death in, in 1957, she was constantly fighting the, the empire, constantly writing to them. And even in partition, she was saying that if the Punjab, if India is partitioned, Punjab should be given back to me. I am the legal heir, legal heir of, of, of the Punjab. 
and, and with um, I've seen those proclamations that she wrote and I've got her personal handwritten proclamations that she wrote to the British government. So are we, are we like, I mean, when I say we, because I'm now associating ourselves to that lineage of people because, you know, I suppose, you know, being Sikh and coming from the same communities, is there like a troublesome nature in us? Is there a, a sense that, you know, we like to question things. You look at Sikhs all around the world, you know, yeah. we like to question things, like to stand up things. We, we, you know, we're up for, we're up for a little bit of a ruck every now and then yeah. is what I'm getting to, um, yeah. if, if need be. Yeah. I think it's that Punjabiness inside us, isn't it? We um, we uh, we hate injustice, um, and uh, if we got an opinion, we like to have that opinion out there. Uh, we don't like to hide hide behind it. Um, yeah. So just say it as it is. Um, I know you've got a lot of your the artwork. Um, I can see it in the background now uh, in the picture, yeah. but you've got a lot of of quite special um, pieces of art in your house. Mm. What, you, quite a bit. You're like a little one man museum. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it really literally started when I was researching um, in Norfolk and Suffolk. And when I would go and see many of these people who, who knew that the Leap Singh family and they would pull out these albums and, and items of clothing and, and photographs and, 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 and documents and said, no, this, this, is, this is the Leap Singhs and this was given to me by Princess so-and-so. And, -so. and um, no, my eyes would sort of light up and then I would say, but would you would you would you would you sell these and many of them would actually say you know how much you want to pay me and and some of the people would just say you know what just take the item because we know that you're interested in the story and you would look after this and and um, it's better with you uh, than us because our children have no interest in this um, and that's how I started accumulating um, the collection about sort of 20 uh, about 20 years ago um, and now it's um, it's 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 grown um, have items in museums all over the world um, it's in, in exhibitions. We recently um, had an exhibition in Thetford um, last year, just before COVID. Uh, I, I loaned a few items to the, the Kensington Palace Museum. Um, they had an exhibition on Queen Victoria and Empire. Um, so it's nice because the items actually get get an outing, so people get to see the items rather than just being stored and, and stuck in, in in a cupboard. Good on you, Pete. I think you're amazing. Um, yeah. All credit to you, and uh, and keep doing what you do, mate. Thank you so Thank much you for your much. time. Cheers. Thanks, Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Wait, 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 wait. Before you go, I need to ask you to make sure you have hit the subscribe button and you are listening to these podcasts regularly. So if they're on YouTube, if you're watching this now, huh? Lucky you. You get to see my face uh, as well as hear the voice. Um, please do hit the bell button and, and hit the subscribe thing and get involved with the whole channel so you can stay up to date with what's going on. It really does make a difference for us. We then know where our subscribers are, the kind of episodes you listen to, and then I can give you more of that kind of stuff, more of the good stuff. You want more good stuff? Hit subscribe to this podcast right now and follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Just go find the Tommy Sander podcast and welcome it into your life.